Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gode. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center in London. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a slightly surgical topic. Two of the commonest benign tumors that we see in reproductive surgery are endometriomas and dermoids. The paper which came out evaluated which surgery would cause more damage to the normal ovarian tissue. We have often debated and often surgeons will often debate and say I can operate very well. I do not destroy normal ovarian tissue. I can dissect very extremely well. That is a surgical expertise talking. Evidence does not suggest that surgeons can do everything without removing a small part of the ovary and this study demonstrates that. Surgical damage to endometrioma and potential damage has been debated and this study looks at inadvertently normal ovarian tissue being removed. So what we've done is we've compared the endometrioma to the dermoid. Let's look at the materials and methods. 2011 to 2013, laparoscopic excision of cysts were done because the risks were lower for recurrence. The stripping technique was used. You give traction and counter-traction. Ovarian edges were left unsutured. Hemostasis was achieved by intravenous transexamic acid and using bipolar. The cystectomy sample was sent for microscopic histological examination to look at the stromal cells which were present from the normal adjacent ovarian tissue. 238 patients over 3 years, 294 endometriomas, 88 patients with dermoid, 99 endometriomas, a CA125 was done with a cutoff of 35. Let's look at what the CA125 said. CA125 was higher in endometriomas and as the cyst increased in size, the CA125 also increased, indicating the inflammatory process. With the dermoid, CA125 were not extensively high. In fact, they were lower. Next, we look at the most important thing. What happens when you strip the cyst wall? Do you remove normal ovarian tissue? And the answer is yes, you do. In endometriomas, there's about 80% of endometriomas have the cyst wall containing some amount of normal ovarian tissue. If you've had previous surgery, if you had previous endometriomas and you do surgery again, the chances of removing ovarian tissue also increases. Compare that to dermoids, the chance of you taking away normal ovarian tissue is much lower. The answer is why. Endometriomas represent a different cyst. In assisted conception, its role of cystectomy often has to be questioned. And that's something which we will discuss further. What we know is as soon as you have an endometrioma, your risk of removing normal ovarian tissue will always remain. It seems that CA125 is proportional to the size of the endometrioma. This paper is limited to a surgical procedure. It's not limit, it is not looking at assisted conception or it's not looking at fertility. We know that endometri with endometriomas, there is lower spontaneous ovulation. There are lower AMH levels. Why? Because endometriomas destroy ovarian tissue. There's lower antral follicle count. Surgery can further reduce the ovarian reserve. And that is something which is extremely important to realize. That if you have an endometrioma and if you operate the more aggressive you are, you're going to remove and lose good ovarian tissue. 
do not do surgery on the ovary without an FSH, LH, estrogen and an AMH level. Medical legally, you will not have a leg to stand on if post-surgery your AMH level comes out to be low. Always do an AMH level. If your AMH is low, rethink about the aggressive nature of your surgery. Step back. And at times it is better to do minimal damage, take the risk of recurrence, but proceed with fertility treatments. That is something which is extremely important to understand from this entire study. However good a surgeon you are, and this department had a few very good surgeons who did the procedure in very much the same way. But it's important to realize that however good you are, you will take away some ovarian tissue. And it's important for surgeons to realize it and also to fertility specialists to realize it. That sometimes it is better to be safe than to be aggressive. Again, at times in which you have recurrent endometriomas, where even with six or seven centimeter endometriomas, you go towards doing a collection of oocytes. And I can show you some videos which I have later on. If you do like this cases, these discussions, please share them. Please ask your juniors or medic or postgraduates to link up because I want to generate that interest in reproductive medicine and surgery. It's probably one of the most fascinating subjects that we know. Thank you very much.